Hey guys, welcome to On Fire Roblox Scripting, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a button that allows players to drop tools that they are holding. So, let's just get right into it. So, before we start, make sure you go under the View tab and open up Explore and Properties. After that, we're going to need an actual tool. Uh, so, if you already have a tool, you can skip to the timestamp on the screen right now. Uh, if you don't, you can just follow along. Uh, so there's two ways that you can get tools in your game. The first way is you make your own. Uh, there's lots of tutorials out there on how to make your own tool. Uh, you can go follow one of those if you like. Uh, the second way is you just steal one from the toolbox, which is what I'm going to be doing. So if you go under the home tab and then just click on toolbox in the search bar, search up something like tool. I'm just going to grab the first one right here. Okay. And put it in the starter pack. Uh, if I go press play right now, uh, I already have a tool inside the player's inventory, which will work just fine. If you go into your explorer and go into your tool, if you open it up, make sure that it has the part called handle uh, with a capital H, just like that. Uh, if it does not, then uh, this tutorial is not going to work. But once we have our tool inside our workspace, what we can do is go under the replicated storage, click the plus and enter in a remote event. And I'm just going to rename this remote event to drop event, just like that. So after we have the remote event inside the game, we're going to create the button that's going to drop the tool. So to do that, we're going to go under the starter GUI, click the plus, enter any screen GUI. I'm just going to rename the screen GUI to drop menu. And then under our screen GUI, I'm going to click the plus and here you can enter in a text button or an image button. Uh, they're going to work exactly the same, but with an image button, you can insert images, make it look nice. Um, but for simplicity reasons for this tutorial, I'm just going to do a text button, but they will both work the same. You just want to make sure you rename the button to something like drop button. And then this is our button. I'm just going to drag it onto the left over here somewhere. And if you go into the properties of your button, you can change different things. For example, the background color, I'm just going to change into like a dark gray. And then I'm going to go all the way to the text over here. I'm just going to write the text into drop tool. Now uh, maybe I'll make the text scaled and I'll change the color to white. So if you look in my studio right now, this is kind of what my button looks like. Just a gray box that says drop tool. Um, but obviously you can make yours look a lot nicer. So once we have the button inside our workspace, we're going to start scripting it. So what we can do is go under the drop button in your starter GUI, click the plus and enter any local script. I'm just going to rename this local script to drop tool client. And then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and you can now write what I write. So I'm going to first start off with some variables. So local button equals to script dot parent and then local replicated storage equals to game con get service inside brackets, put in quotation marks and put in replicated storage. And then finally go to online and write local drop event equals to replicated storage colon wait for child and inside the brackets we're going to put in quotation marks. And this is going to be the name of our remote event, which we named drop event earlier. So basically these are just a bunch of variables for our button and our drop event. So we're going to go down two lines and we're just going to write just a few more lines of code. So we're just going to write button dot mouse button want to click colon connect function. I'm going to put in brackets and then go down a line and then we're just going to write drop event colon fire server. So basically what we've done here is when a player clicks on the drop tool button, we're going to let the server know that someone has clicked on the drop tool button. So this is the client side of the script done. We just need to go to the server now. So to do that, we're going to go back into the explorer, click the plus on server script service and enter any script. And I'm just going to rename this script to drop tool server, just like that. I'm once again going to zoom in a little bit and you can now write what I write. So once again, I'm going to start off with some variables, which I can actually copy from the previous script. So I'm going to go back to drop tool client and I'm going to copy these two lines and I'm just going to paste them in just like that. And then we can go down to lines and now we can write the rest of our script. So to do that, we can just write drop event dot on server event quant connect function. I'm going to put in brackets and then this time in the brackets, we're going to write to player and then go down the line. 
So basically what this means is when the server receives the message that someone has clicked on the button, we're going to get the player that clicked on the button. After that, we can get the player's character and the tool they're holding. So to do that, we can just write local character equals to player dot character, go down the line and then write local tool equals to character colon find first child of class. So this is a really long one. So make sure it looks exactly like that. Inside the brackets, we're going to put in quotation marks and I'm just going to write in tool. So what this one does is it gets the player's character and then from the player's character, we can search if they have any tools. And then what we can do with that is go down two lines and write if tool then, which means if we did find a tool, then what we can do is we can write tool dot handle dot can touch equals to false. So what this is going to do is uh, remember the handle in our tool. Uh, so if I go back into the flash right here, so handle is the main part of the tool. We're just going to make it so that nothing can touch it. So we can have like a smooth fall to the ground. And then we're going to go down the line and then we're going to write tool dot parent equals to workspace. We're going to go down the line, write task dot wait one. And then we're going to go down the line and write tool dot handle dot can touch equals to true. So what these next three lines do is we're going to put the tool into the workspace. And after one second, we're going to make it so that players can touch the tool once again. And that is all we have to do for this tutorial. So let's go test it out. So here I am inside the game. If I hold out my tool just like this and then press on our drop tool button, you can see the tool gets dropped just a few blocks in front of us. I'm just going to do that again. And you can see that the tool keeps on getting dropped whenever I press drop tool. Now, if I just hold the tool, uh, but I don't hold it out or like equip it. If I press drop tool, uh, nothing happens because I don't have the tool equipped as it has to be equipped. Then it will drop the tool. So before this tutorial ends, I'm just going to show you quickly how to make it so that the tool drops from the player's hands instead of a few blocks in front of them. So to do that, we're just going to go from if tool then just go down line and write local original C frame equals to tool dot handle dot C frame. And then after tool dot parent equals to workspace, we're just going to go down a line and then we're going to write tool dot handle dot C frame equals to the original C frame. And that is all we have to do. So if I go press play now, if I hold out the tool, and just watch carefully where the tool is. If I press drop tool, it's just going to drop from the player's hand. So here's another angle. Uh, you can see it just dropped from the player's hand. So yeah, that'll be it for this tutorial. Uh, if you like a version of this where instead of pressing a button, you are pressing a key on your keyboard, uh, you can find that tutorial on the top right of the screen right now or, or at the very end of this video. Um, but if you like this tutorial, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!